because there's a lot to learn about cotton and I really don't want to give you unnecessary information I want to give you information that is researched and that's real Hello fashionistas, welcome back to my channel you're watching Cetal MD In today's channel, we're going to deep dive into the world of fabrics This might be a topic that's really slow for a lot of people but it's so important to understand the fabrics and we're going to explore 5 popular fabrics it's Cotton, wool, synthetic, leather and fur to help you understand their characteristics, uses and sustainability aspects I know a lot of people are like Oh my god, Lala, she's going to talk about leather Yeah, I'm going to talk about leather So, let's get started Number one, let's talk about cotton. Cotton, it's a timeless, versatile fabric loved by many. Cotton is derived from the fluffy fibers of a cotton plant. It is breathable and comfortable and it makes it ideal for cotton, for casual wear, lounge wear and summer clothing. The fabrics absorb in nature, makes it perfect for hot and humid climates and it helps keep you cool and dry. But we often see cottons in a wide range. If, if you think that I'm like looking at my laptop all the time yes my points are there because there's a lot to learn about cotton and i really don't want to give you unnecessary information i want to give you information that is researched and that's real we see cotton in a wide range of styles from basic tees to elegant dresses and even denim jeans so it's favorable for you to buy denim that's made out of like 99 percent cotton one percent elastin so it's a little stretchy it's got that stretch but it will hold its structure and cotton is easy to dye. It allows designers to play with vibrant colors and patterns. On top of that, cotton is biodegradable, making it an eco-friendly option, except, of course, if it's mixed with the last thing, then it's really not. But it's still biodegradable, but not completely fully. Whether or not you prefer a laid-back look or something more sophisticated, cotton has got you covered. The cons about cotton is that it shrinks, it wrinkles easily, and it's easily damaged especially if it's all full cotton. Like if you have cotton t-shirts, you realize it's always like it has holes in this part of your belly where you tuck in. That's really just how cotton works and that's the beauty of it. So once it's ruined, you can chuck it without feeling guilty because it's cotton, it is biodegradable. It does color bleed when you wash. Sometimes, eventually it fades. The controversy of cotton is something that we have to discuss as well. Number one, high water consumption. So you will not believe this, but just imagine this cotton, it's a freaking thirsty plant. That plant is so dry. Like if you just think of how dry that plant is, first of all, the branches and the, you know, the bud and everything looks brown and freaking dry and they need a lot of water to, you need more than 20,000 liters of water to grow, to produce one kg of cotton fluff. Number two, it uses a lot of chemicals. So it's one of the most chemical dependent crop, to, like herbicides, fertilizers to grow cotton. And number three, it's a highly genetically modified plant. So when I say genetically modified plant, why does it matter? Because the, this is why it matters. The genetically modified plants disturbs the ecosystem where it grows, killing a lot of insects and a lot of nutrients in the ground, making the ground not very sustainable and friendly, environmentally friendly for the next crop growing, which means cotton farming is actually unsustainable cotton farming, especially the ones where they don't actually renew the ground and do the groundwork, can actually has been responsible for like the destruction of large-scale ecosystem such as the ones in Aral Sea and Central Asia. I'm looking at my book guys, I'm giving you solid information here. Now number two, let's look at wool. Wool is durable, it's elastic and it gives garment a comfortable and long-lasting fit and then additionally it has natural, it, did you know this? Like wool is actually what naturally water repellent, making it ideal for outerwear like coats and jacket like Mm, hello, that's why the whole Burberry jacket was so popular back in the days when it first started. However, keep in mind that wool does require a proper care and occasionally, you know, dry cleaning its stuff to maintain its quality. So it is a bit expensive to clean and also to make. However, here's the thing about wool though. If you wear it during winter, like it's cold, right? You would need like one layer and it'll keep you nice and warm. And then when it starts getting a bit hot, it won't necessarily make you feel so hot. It will still be okay. It's kind of a nice fabric to wear, especially in places where the weather changes quite frequently in a 24 hour span. And I'm talking about Melbourne weather is like hot to dry to cold to wet in like the same day. So yeah, wearing wool would really serve you so good. And also cause it's water repellent. You're not gonna get your clothes wet inside. So 
think about that let's talk about synthetic fibers so synthetic fibers are basically bands of natural fibers which are you know to enhance their performance so the unicode does this really well they play with a lot of synthetic fibers and try to find a way that make their fibers very durable just by either mixing it with like certain chemicals and then weaving it or weaving it in certain ways to make you know really good like material and then clothing overall so they're popular for their strength elasticity, resistance, wrinkles, and face. Additionally, a lot of synthetic fibers are made from more affordable synthetic fibers. It's so much cheaper than all the natural stuff out there because it can be made in that one lab and you really don't have to go out and grow it and take time to grow it and things like that. So obviously it's gonna be cheaper, right? However, critics raise concerns about their environmental impact and non-biodegradability. It's essential to strike a balance between choosing eco-friendly options and, you know, when possible. So you can try. However, there are some companies out there that do this really well. So they sell synthetic fiber shirts and t-shirts and things like that. And then when it's time, like the end of the life of the garment, they ask you to return the garment to them where they can then recycle it for you into new fibers to weave into new garments. Number four, moving on to leather, my favorite. So I love leather. It's luxurious. It's Fabric adds a ton of sophistication to anything that you're wearing. And here's the thing about leather. Leather is made from, while it is made from animal hides, cow hide being the most common, it is something that will last forever. And even if it doesn't, you can repair it. Guys, you can repair leather. If it's synthetic, if it's plastic, the paint starts peeling off, the plastic starts degrading, you cannot repair it unless you shred it up and recycle it into a new plastic. But you can repair leather it's just like skin it doesn't grow anything like that but it can be repaired leather has been used for centuries now like it's known for its durability vitality and people use it for like various forms like jacket bag shoes accessories with proper care leather items can last for many many years and like some shops like if you buy a bag from coach they'll be like you can send your bag back to coach and then they will like make it new and give it back to you. So that's one way of getting you to keep your bags and using it for a long time. That's why I love leather. Though a lot of people think that, you know, it's a, you need to consider the ethical concerns related to animal welfare and choose alternatives like for leather. But for leather is basically plastic. If you want to choose plastic, okay, fine. But here's the thing though, while for leather or the process of making for leather or false leather is so much less toxic than making natural leather. There are places in the world now where people are making leather in a less harmful manner as opposed to countries like India and China where of course the way they make the leather is so unethical although they produce a lot of it but the way they produce their leather is so unethical I would say if you were a designer so just please just don't buy leather fabric from them. Not necessarily China. China's actually a lot of places in China have actually improved in their leather production. Maybe even India. I, I don't want to generalize. But if you want to find someone who makes leather, ethically produced leather, then visit their factory and see what they do and see if that's where you're buying your leather from and make sure you take pictures and go like this leather was produced ethically, you know? So at least people would not feel guilty in buying leather but come on people leather just lasts forever which means you don't need to buy so many and you can be a bit minimalist about it and it can last you forever did i already say last forever number five fur okay so let's discuss fur fur is a fabric that has been the subject of much debate in the fashion industry now traditionally fur comes from most animals like minks foxes and rabbits however due to ethical and sustainable concerns now a lot of faults or faux fur has gained popularity and it is cruelty free alternative and I for one definitely will not wear real leather just just the fur because I have I have I have a furry animal and it's a teacup chihuahua and I love him so much and I cannot imagine having his fur on me just because it's nice and soft and then now it's dead and I'm like playing with it it's just it grosses me out but that's my opinion. It doesn't have to gross everybody out. A lot of people love it. Like, especially in Russia, people used to wear those mink hats and it, it actually worked very well to keep them warm because it's so freaking cold in Russia. So they need it there. Anyways, and there you have it. And remember, understanding fabrics is not only helps you make you more informed choices as a consumer, but it also plays a huge role 
in learning the sustainability portion of the fashion industry, which is very important, something that I had to spend a lot of time learning in uh, class. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video helpful at all or funny or a uh, complete waste of time or you did not like it, just give me a thumbs up anyway, you know, so I know. And also subscribe down below and hit the bell notification button so you don't miss another video. And I will see you again soon. Until then, keep creating. And um, yeah, I will see you again in my next video. Bye, guys.